Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Reverend Lex Cade White. Thank you for having me here with you, wherever you are, wherever you're at, for worship. We welcome one and all, and may we recall that we are. We are. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed by being. We are blessed by being. We are blessed by being here. We are blessed by being here. We are blessed by being here together. We are blessed by being here together. Opening prayer. God of all that has us in awe of your love and wisdom and our beaten and broken world, may we find a way to make what feels broken be seen as eggs cracked for a cake. May we take the time to become the cake we need, not the cake that breaks. Today's reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verses 13 through 18. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them, and they are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. Thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Nearer, my God, to thee. i 
stars for God, upwards I fly. Still all my song shall be nearer my God to thee, nearer my God to thee, nearer to thee. Lord, as we gather near and far, wherever we are, May we be present to how the Spirit is moving and calling each of us into being more of ourselves, more of your beloved community, and exactly who we are called most deeply to be and to become. We thank you for the wisdom to decipher your call from others. We thank you for the strength to go against the grains we need to. We thank you for helping us to push back on what others may force upon us in this life. We do so in you, through you, with you, and because of you. Your wisdom and love, may they always be our guide. Ashe, amen. In this life, there are so many things that tell us how we are to be, to look, to act, to think, to love, to work, to dress. You name it, there is an expectation. Sometimes these expectations or frameworks were given to us, are natural to us, and even an extension of who and how we are. Other times, it is so counter to our being, to our substance, that to bend ourselves to fit in would create more twists and turns of intensity than a pretzel or a roller coaster. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. We are made intentionally not by accident or chance. Science tells us that the cells that make us are vast and varied, and we are each unique. Even twins are not exact replicas or clones of one another. We are each unique, and a lot goes into our uniqueness. More than our biology is our personality, our gifts, our talents, our flaws and flails. They all make us who God intended us to be. Before COVID-19, I thought there was an agreed upon, even an accepted understanding of who and how we are to be together. An assumption that we are each here for a reason and at a basic level that we are invested in one another and invested at least in general survival. By the grace of God, by the grace of society, by the grace of humanity and being in the same pickle called life. And like pickles, we need vinegar. Some of us get a lot, some of us get a little, some are bitter, some are sweet. But we are all in this pickle of life, and for that, there is a certain amount of respect. COVID has taught me that some people feel their autonomy is more important than my safety, my wife's safety, and my son's safety. I say this because I work in a hospital. I have most of my career in ministry. And until this year, I never worried or wondered if this was a dangerous job, if I would not come home, or if I would bring home something harmful or toxic to my family. And yet, here I am. I have two units in change assigned to me that are primarily COVID patients. I also cover the whole hospital as the PM chaplain. I come home and have a cleaning, aggressive ritual to keep myself, my wife, and my kiddo safe. And I still do not know if or when I will bring it home, or if or when I will get it. We need people to wear masks. We need people to socially distance. We need people to be safe for themselves and those around them. 
This virus does not see politics. It does not see money or age or health. It has struck too many of our communities and too many of our families across ages throughout this country and world. We do not know who or how close it will come to each of us, but we can slow down the pace and spread. This is not a political statement. I am saying this to you as a healthcare worker. It is not just the cold. It is not a flu. Its side effects after, if we are lucky to survive and are COVID free, are very much real, and we all deserve better. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, we all have a purpose. We may not always know it, understand it, or at times even like it, and still we are called to show up. When we put ourselves in danger, when we put others we love and those we do not know or like in danger, when we know how to do better, we need to stop and ask ourselves, what if they are someone's parent, friend, or spouse? What if they have hopes and dreams? Why is my comfort more important than their safety? Extravagant welcome is about accepting ourselves and others, and more importantly, making an effort to not take action at the expense of our neighbors. We do not need to think alike to love alike. We have the right to feel safe and furthermore to be safe. We are not always in control. That is true. But when and as we are, we should be. Sure, some of our neighbors are less fun or cool or enjoyable and should they necessarily die for it? No. To extravagantly welcome people, especially these days, takes a mask, it takes a smile, it takes a nod, it takes holding the door, it takes being patient, it takes saying, you do not need to be perfect. No one is, no one will ever be. We must accept that during this time, we are all not okay. We are all in this together, and we are all in this. You do not need to be how you were before the pandemic, or even try to get back to it. 210,000 American lives have been lost and counting. 1.1 million lives have been lost globally and counting. We will never be the same when we get through this, whenever we do, because we will. However we get through this, because we will, we will need kindness. We will need compassion. We will need extravagant welcome. People who were never or are rarely being seen as essential are being recognized more fully for their contributions to others. And yes, the, those who save lives in healthcare are now to be known as people brave enough, courageous enough to put their own lives, our own lives on the line for our patients. People have made so many sacrifices. We all have, living separately from our families, not hugging each other, not gathering. If and as the CDC and our public health officials guide us through this maze, I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end and I am still with you. There are so many millions of ways to be human. We need to take this time to both recognize and affirm this and allow each and every one to do this because we are all going through this together. And yet, we each will and do feel it differently, and that is okay. Pre-COVID, 
I, and I'm sure others, believed that self-care was a goal to reach, about things that we could do intentionally to relax, to balance, to treat ourselves, to pamper ourselves, etc. I was sure that it did not mean celebrating or acknowledging my gifts or celebrating or acknowledging my flaws and flops. I have seen people reach out to loved ones in more profound and meaningful ways during this time. I have seen patients and families and you in the community come together to say you deserve better. I will keep you safe by keeping myself safe. We have all seen many people's homes through Zoom and Teams and similar entities. And we have heard people cleaning and caring for pets and family members and children in the background of calls. We have realized the labor of love that our educators provide and the importance of our fast food and retail workers and waitresses and cooks and chefs. And we have gained an appreciation for small businesses that we now miss and that are struggling. We must extravagantly welcome the reality that there are a multitude of lives going on around us and, they are, and we are losing too many of them in ways that we could and should prevent. Between nature rejuvenating herself in our absence to people being taken for granted now being our opportunity to see another person outside of our family or our bubbles. We are also hearing, of sto hearing stories of people who are very healthy becoming aggressively ill some people who are dying, some people who, are, who were vulnerable to begin with, and others who, it is be, who they are exposed and losses of life occur because they are under and uninsured in this country of plenty. We are hearing stories of people losing their homes and businesses and seeing our systems that were supposed to support us all support only the few. And we are finding ways of holding ourselves and others accountable. God wants us to take care of our neighbors, to care for ourselves, care for the children, care for the vulnerable, care for the children and the strangers in our lives. This year, we are being forced to see what our inability to do this can, how it can manifest in our lives. The Bible tells us to seek and we shall find and knock and the door will be open unto us. Now is the time to seek many solutions. Now is the time to find a better way. We must bang down the doors of injustice and inequity, of the us versus them, of the me versus you, of my needs at the expense of others and find a way for extravagant welcome for all. Dear Lord, as we live and breathe, as we stress and dream, as we celebrate and fear, as we wonder and wander, may we know that we are not alone in our pain or our joy. We are not alone. May we lift up those in need that we know and those we do not. May we care for ourselves and care for each other. May we affirm people's right to be, to live, to be safe, and to be free. For it is your will that is to be done, for it is your call we are to fulfill. For it is your wisdom and love that are infinite, not our own. So humbly and boldly we submit to your call of extravagant welcome today and every day. Ashe, amen. Now is the time for pastoral prayer. Our lives are but moments, moments of joy at new beginnings and some of much needed endings, of smiles and fullness, moments of pain, of struggle, of confusion, of wrong answers and of no answers, moments of love, 
of your family and friends, of your teams and your classmates, of life and of living. Moments of laughter at yourself, at relief and exhaustion, at finding and getting lost. Moments of forgetting the point of a story, the place it all begins and the desire to control. Moments of remembering that you are not alone and you can always help and you can always ask for help. Moments of calm when you know it will be all right or admit that you have no clue or that you have it all under control or realize nothing is truly in your control. Moments of silence when the words have been said, when what is known and what is forgotten is gone. Let us join in our prayer of our Savior, the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now is the time for commissioning and benediction. May we go forth in this moment more caring, more kind, more respectful of ourselves and others. Please join in the benediction response. I am deserving of care and kindness. You are deserving of care and kindness. I respect you, and I respect myself. Go now in peace. <laughs>